welcome back participants uh, we are continuing with our session on product engineering and design thinking and today uh, the first uh, lecture of module 7 uh, the module 7 is on product complexity affordability and design thinking and uh, this lecture is on tolerance design which is uh, based on uh, Taguchi's robust design uh, and engineering approach. Um, as I indicated to you earlier that uh, this Taguchi method is a well known method and uh, there are several resources available and in my last lecture, lecture number 30, I have provided certain links also for those. So, um, uh, up to the parameter level design there is not much difficulty because there are plenty of resources you can go to any there are many uh, other materials books also is there. So, whatever you uh, intend to learn about uh, this parameter design part you can and uh, rather easy, but, but what I have observed maybe you also will observe if you do some um, search that the tolerance design practically has not been addressed uh, practically it is very scantily available and uh, therefore, how to proceed um, uh, is not very uh, clear to the users. So, uh, I have taken that up um, as a, an exclusive uh, lecture session and therefore, today we will focus only on uh, Taguchi's uh, uh, robust design methodology uh, part which is tolerance design. Uh, <coughs> this is very important particularly for complex products where so many factors and components and variables are involved and when the performance is being affected um, through uh, by the you know uh, variation in several inputs and it is very difficult to um, decipher which one is that unless we have a systematic method like tolerance design etcetera. Tolerance design is done only after parameter design because once the parameter is design decided that is at what level the effect of this uh, um, uh, noises or the variance variations would be minimum and then at that point also we need to optimize in the sense that at a given point say at a given temperature say 50 degree centigrade whether it works best uh, between 55 uh, 45 to 55 degree centigrade or uh, 48 to 52 degree centigrade that would give the best result. So, tolerance design becomes very important uh, for that and at that level. So, product engineers, uh, product developers, uh, designers they uh, use this method and so uh, I am only trying to fill that gap which is practically non-existent in as a tutorial video material and would attempt to cover that. But let me tell you I also have put a reference um, here when I chose an example. Uh, the example is not same, but uh, a similar problem has been uh, dealt with by uh, Philip J. Ross uh, in his book uh, that I will discuss, but they are also um, uh, there are uh, 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 certain uh, uh, results are placed, but the intermediate intermediate steps um, uh, perhaps uh, will not be so much uh, detailed as you would see. Be that as it may, so I start from here with the short preamble uh, stating that um, that our uh, job is also to address this complexity of product and that we for that we need to discuss tolerance design. Hence, uh, without further um, elaboration on this, I would like to go and uh, go to the slide called uh, concept covered. So, now here what I find is 
uh, what you would see is that the focus is only on tolerance design and uh, we will discuss the approach um, and this approach we would actually explain explicate with her uh, with the help of an example um, example problem and then we would go to the steps but of course some of the steps are uh, involved are you know uh, are part of say uh, statistical methods etc where i have given the glimpse but obviously if you think that you need a little more learning on that you can consult any book on um, say for example anova uh, anova we have used analysis of variance so you can use uh, learn that from any um, such a uh, uh, NPTEL or say for any YouTube lecture or say any online lecture or say uh, from books and etc. Those are easily available, uh, but then I have just given the glimpse of it also so that you know how to connect. But oh, for obvious reason because we are discussing product engineering and hence we will not be able to go much into the details of all statistics, but uh, these are simple steps and it is not very difficult for you to understand. However, I, I have placed it in very uh, systematic stepwise method that will be rather convenient for you I suppose. Uh, this already I have told you, but to start today's discussion I am giving this reference once again uh, that uh, Taguchi proposed uh, the you know robust design methodology which starts with system design and but Taguchi's major contribution is in parameter design and tolerance design. Here we, we have already discussed parameter design earlier, we will focus only on tolerance designs today. Uh, the, here as I said it is presented with an example and the preamble already uh, are discussed in the last lecture. The major there are uh, uh, various other aspects at the introductory stage which has been discussed in lecture number 30. So, I would not repeat them here, uh, if you want you can go back go to my uh, presentation lecture number 30 and find what was the content. It is the lecture number 31 just the previous one. Here uh, I would just give you a glimpse of uh, the tolerance design. Uh, as I said it is a Taguchi based approach, but it actually works on the principle of standard deviation or which normally we express as sigma small sigma. Uh, factors with a certain amount of variation about the nominal value say a nominal value of a, mm, mm, of a dimension maybe say in millimeter uh, it is in and, and so how, what is the range it will have a span say range from minimum to maximum as we see as, as we know in a tolerance this thing. Now <clears throat> to assess uh, uh, the effect of variance it is not exactly the limit or um, what is called that USL LSL upper specific percent limit lower specific percent limit based monitoring and uh, tolerance stacking it is rather it is not that it is rather to check the effect of va variance and meeting uh, of the uh, inputs on the final product the output and here our purpose is to mitigate that by adjusting or or tightening the tolerance more specifically so to what extent we should we tighten should we should we uh, and that rationality because making it too close uh, may increase the cost and demand on resources which per perhaps is not so much required. So, what is the optimal level how 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 much is we can tolerate that is what we try to find out from here. Now, as we have discussed already about the concept of level in Taguchi design. So, if it is a two level um, uh, problem two level consideration or two level design two level design planning then the lower limit is set as nominal minus 1 standard of deviation and the maximum is nominal plus 1 standard deviation that means nominal plus uh, minus 1 sig minus sigma and that is a nominal plus sigma. However, if it is a case of say 3 level 
then a three level is a uh, that is a something called max min mid and min maximum and minimum these two extremes and the midpoint midpoint which we call here the nominal nominal point nominal value uh, like say when we say oh, oh, a pipe diameter of a pipe is um, uh, 25 millimeter. Now, that is a nominal diameter does it mean that all pipes will be 25 millimeter no that is the nominal diameter, but then it may vary between say 25.5 to 24.5. So, that is the variation. So, nominal diameter if I have to ask I will say it is a 25 millimeter diameter pipe. Now, so here the formula for this as uh, you would find in the handbooks at other places of Taguchi etcetera that the uh, minimum is nominal minus uh, standard deviation multiplied by square root of 3 by 2 and maximum is a nominal plus uh, standard deviation into uh, square root of 3 by 2. These are this have already been devised um, and it is universally acceptable accepted and it is used by the practitioners and everybody. So, and the mid value is nominal as I said. So, this is the fundamental understanding here the important point is that in tolerance design how we define uh, which out of so many factors or components involved rather uh, all components are not equally responsible for uh, the deviation or variation in the outcome. So, which are those on which the outcome depends is the first thing to be found out. So, who, who, which are those candidates on which we have to apply uh, tolerance design in particular. There may be some other factors where which has no, very uh, uh, limited effect or minimal effect there we need not do anything because it is not contributing to the outcome. So, identification and controlling of those factors identifying those factors are important and that is done through a concept called percent contribution which is the key indicator with regard to which factors are the candidates for tolerance design exercise. That is those it is written here also on bold on the right side you can find that is those causing larger variation should undergo tighter control to effectively reduce total variation. So, now, now we have made the entire preamble the background now we will move on to a glimpse that I just in the beginning said analysis of variance uh, that is uh, there is a calculation which perhaps you have already seen while doing parameter design uh, or you, you this ANOVA you will find uh, plenty of books and materials uh, and learning ANOVA is not difficult that means, out of uh, ANOVA is basically analysis of variance that is the source of which uh, affects the total variation how much that is the analysis. And after the, see there is a total uh, output and we are uh, explaining trying to explain the contribution of each factor suppose there are 5 factors. So, what is the extent that 5 factors are contributing to that and and when we are a, a comparing that with the total variation we find that there is a gap which is unexplained uh, where we cannot say that ok yeah, we can say if there are 5 factors a b c d e a's contribution is this b's contribution is this e's contribution this and so on and so forth, but still the 100 percent is not complete there is a, sl a small part which is still unexplained that that gap is called error. So, here we need those uh, concepts and this uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, treatment requires uh, a statistical computation where the uh, sum of squares uh, concept and um, uh, there is also a concept of say uh, 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 your uh, mean sum, uh, sum of uh, squares. So, uh, so, these are uh, the things that is error as I said is uh, sum of square of uh, total minus sum of square of individual uh, um, um, uh, individual uh, factors which are the components in this case. And uh, mean of the squares for each factor is determined 
and there is a concept called degrees of freedom. So, uh, it is a statistical degrees of freedom, it has nothing to do with so called mechanical degrees of freedom um, that it is having a three dimension, it is a statistical. So, uh, any standard uh, um, um, uh, preliminary book on statistics you can consult, uh, because see this, this we are dealing from the product engineering perspective. So, I would uh, imagine that your career would be in product engineering that is the main thing. Uh, product design, product development, product engineering and whatever say other material say statistics because uh, I, I, I hope you would appreciate that entire statistics whatever is used here uh, from the very fundamental we cannot come up to this because otherwise those will be uh, different stream of lectures. So, one uh, stream of lecture will be ANOVA, one stream of lecture will be on uh, some other um, statistical methods. Uh, so, here I would suggest in case it is, uh, I mean there are so many uh, materials available, you can go to any tutorial videos and you can learn it. And here therefore, there is a thing called significance test which as I said which factor is important and the becomes a candidate for tolerance design not all factors. So, how significant is that, that it becomes a candidate, this, uh, the significance is identified through a test called F test. Uh, Fisher's test, so it is that is why it is called F test, um, which is uh, uh, taken as the ratio of um, uh, mean of the square uh, for the factor divided by mean of the square of error. Error I have already told you what is it. So, this is a basic glimpse. I am not uh, uh, discussing the entire ANOVA process here, it is not possible also because the course is on product engineering and not on statistics per se, but then whatever the statistical input required I am introducing you to that. So, that whenever you find it interesting or more importantly when you find that you are you are you are needed to use it, then you can go to those and quickly learn it. Uh, because these are interesting and advanced um, methodologies for dealing with um, complex products. In fact, uh, the more these things are done, one would find that without any major investment by tweaking or uh, by adjusting and controlling these values would give much improved result and therefore, the better quality at same or lesser price can be made available, which addresses also the affordability issue. So, that is why we have chosen to deal with it in this category which is complex product and with affordability aspect. All right, so um, now we proceed with that um, example. Uh, this example is self explanatory and uh, here <coughs> we would deal with a throttle control mechanism. Uh, the throttle control mechanism is a, is a, is a kind of a product which is used in many places, it is used in um, uh, uh, snow blower, um, mist blower, lawn mower. Um, so, there are several in an automotive of course, there are throttle control, which actually controls the fuel, controls the air mixture and therefore, um, the um, uh, you know uh, best uh, outcome in terms of power generation and speed and all that happens, speed particularly. Um, so, here uh, such a th throttle control mechanism which is to operate um, uh, that the user would maneuver and uh, there is uh, some force required to adjust that uh, lever to get that particular level of throttle. Like when you press uh, the accelerator in your car, uh, you apply certain pressure, a lever pressure. So, here also uh, that lever pressure is applied and uh, the uh, according to the ergonomic convenience and the convenience of uh, the, uh, the best uh, you know performance of the product, it is set at that point. 9 kg to 1.4 kg minimum and maximum uh, load level would be the best. 
and that is the specification therefore. So, here in that product um, uh, I, 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 on the left you would find that uh, this uh, um, are the components 7 components are used in all in 7 components means 3 are washers 2 are uh, cone disc springs and lever and casing. So, in all there are 7 uh, components which have been mentioned here washer within bracket 3 means 3 washers are used cone disc spring within bracket 2 means 2 cone washers are used C 1 and C 2 washer W 1 W 2 W 3. So, W 1 W 2 W 3 L C and C 1 C 2 makes it 7. Now, here for each we have presented the nominal value all are in millimeter on uh, which is written on the top. So, here the idea is that the friction control should be such that when I fix it the you know the control it stays at a particular um, point and does not move away so easily, but again it should not be too hard that when I intend to move I can also move it easily or any the user can move it easily. So, the friction should be enough, but friction should not be too hard you understand the challenge. So, therefore, that there comes the tolerance design and the range. So, here the range is 0 0.9 kg to 1.4 kg. Now, here you see the ha, here it is driven by the standard deviation as I said. So, the nominal values to start with as it was uh, felt uh, that uh, the standard deviation would be uh, 0 0.1 to 5 in case of uh, the washers and cone disc spring. However, it should be 0.25 for the other two the lever and the casing. We will see we'll, if we if we choose this whether it satisfies the purpose if it satisfies fine with this if uh, from our experiment we find that 0.9 to 1.4 kg is being made that is fine or else we have to adjust those values or the deviation values which actually is the control of tolerance. So, the deviation values are readjusted and the experiment is rerun to see whether now it is within the desired range or not. So, now we will proceed. So, here we have already given that those uh, data that is uh, level 1 and level 2 that as you have seen that the say for example, uh, it has been done for all cases the nominal value is 1 and the standard deviation is 0 0.125. So, if it is a plus nominal plus sigma on the maximum side and nominal minus sigma on the minimum side if we are taking 2 level then it would be 1 minus 0 0.125 as minimum and 1 plus 0.125 as maximum. Let us see here you see that the 1 minus 0.125 which is 0.875 is on the level 1 or the minimum 1 or and the higher level is 1.125. So, similarly for it has been done for all uh, components the minimum and maximum where for uh, liver and casing it was 0.25. So, you can see the nominal value for liver was 19. So, 19 minus 0 0.25 is 18.75 and that is 19.25 on the higher side. Casing was 25. So, it is 24.75 on the lower side and 25.25 on the higher side. Um, similarly, for only spring etcetera. So, this is the minimum maximum values. Now, what with this with this we run the experiment. The experiment here normally uh, one experiment one uh, um, uh, experiment uh, a, 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 so it, it is a, it is I said that uh, uh, there are 7 factors already in component and there are 2 levels. So, it will be as we discussed earlier that uh, it will be um, L 8 the uh, orthogonal array. L H means there will be 8 treatment conditions, but the thing is here we could have just y 1, but why we have taken y 2, 
because often it is found that single value may be erroneous. If two values are not close, then uh, we can investigate if anything is gone wrong. So, though it is not mandatory to use two sets of data, two uh, you know experimental runs, but it is always preferred that two experiments are carried out. So, that if anything by any chance I mean it is it is unlikely that two will go haywire at the same time, but I mean, probability is much less that is why two are often uh, considered and that is what uh, is recommended also. So, here you see that uh, uh, two uh, uh, sets of values are taken for the same eight uh, experiment same means equal number of experiment techniques. Um, so, 1 through 8 and the first set is giving uh, the values as this based on the L 8 or O A 8 table, which we have discussed in the previous slide. So, I do not want uh, uh, you to be burdened with that again, uh, you can always refer to an O 8 in the parameter design in the lecture number 30. Uh, and obviously, I have to do justice with time. So, I, I would not uh, bring the old slides over and over again to explain that, but you can always check what is way and that will be a good exercise. This is way when we can just google and find out what is L8 and you would see for yourself right away, right now in front of you in the uh, uh, in your uh, uh, laptop or uh, computer or whatever or mobile phone. Uh, this looks like a bit complicated, but do not you worry, it is not really so, because I have already explained all these things, the background theories are given. Here as I said that these are three washers W 1, W 2, W 3 liver uh, casing, uh, uh, this by mistake is H, which should be C, we will make the correction uh, here, uh, it is casing. So, uh, whatever these values are this. Uh, and uh, so, here what we find that the sum of square values based on the data already provided is 0 0.15, 0 0.13 and so on and so forth, sum of squares etcetera that, that you have already got that. Now, degrees of freedom are 1 and total degrees of freedom since these are 8 experiments and 2 that means total 16 and we know design of exp, uh, in the degrees of freedom uh, would be that 16 minus 1 that is 15 which is at the bottom. So, total uh, degrees of freedom is equal to 8 treatment into 2 replications and minus 1 is equal to 15. Um, then the uh, mean standard deviation or the called variant uh, this uh, variance. So, the variance is uh, um, the sum of square divided by the degrees of freedom and you can see the, the values here. And uh, the AF table uh, uh, the calculation I have already discussed and these are the values and there is a table called AF table again um, I do not want to burden with you this is uh, you google and find these AF tables at the different confidence levels. So, here um, what we see that uh, except these two which are uh, written in red uh, have become significant. So, top 5 are significant. So, that, that for that uh, the uh, critical values uh, 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 those which are above the critical values would be considered critical and that would be known from the F table. If you consult F table and the uh, MS error divide, uh, is equal to uh, the SS error divided by degrees of freedom for error uh, we can find it out. So, far so good and now from here we come to the percent contribution. The percent contribution if you see 0.215 here and if we say that is the total and first one is 0 0.015. So, what is the percent contribution of washer 1 in this? So, it is 0 0.015 divided by 0 0.215 into 100 that is 7 percent. Similarly, for washer number 2 it is 6 percent, for uh, washer number 3 it is 7 percent, 
whereas this liver and casing it is uh, 41.82 percent nearly 42 and that is nearly 36 percent 35.78 to be precise. Rest are the values which are not high and they are not significant also and the error uh, percent contribution also is very small that is 1.4. So, from here we find that percent contribution of these two components uh, this uh, liver and casing are maximum and which constitutes more than 75 percent of the whole variation. Hence, we would try and see what we can do here rather more precisely that we need to tighten the tolerance on these two components like it was uh, 0.25 for each now we have to reduce it and therefore, these two the red ones it is called pool that we are pulling and merging it with the error that means, we are ignoring them and taking it as an error which does not affect us much. So, here this error degrees of freedom becomes 10 if we add these two red ones 1 and 1 and the total also gets added and so we are removing the spring aspect of the thing and so we come to this new table. So, here we see the country recalculate and we find that error has by combination it has gone up from 1.4 to 2.4, but we now are better focused with the uh, dimensions and see what is happening here because we have marked that error term uh, with the springs fine or the rather the springs are marked with the error term. Here the equation is that uh, the variance which is the uh, sum of square total by degrees of freedom total and all these values are known to you already which is 0.215 divided by 15 that is 0 0.0143. Standard deviation we know which is the square root of the variance that is 0 0.0143 which is expressed in kg. So, it is 0 0.12 kg. So, standard deviation now is 0 0.12 kg but is 0 0.12 kg is good enough for our work question is how much is good enough? Good enough is our range is 0 0.5 kg because we are saying it is operable between 0 0.9 and 1.4. So, 0 0.72 is higher when we are considering that 6 standard deviation yeah 6 standard deviation plus minus 3 sigma. So, 6 uh, standard deviation is 0 0.12. So, if we are multiplying with 6 it becomes 0 0.72 which is higher than what is prescribed or what is desired target value. So, it will not work. So, what we do we tighten the tolerance as I just said. So, how do you tighten the tolerance we make say a, a put a factor of 1 by 4 1 fourth it is to some extent you can call it a trial and error method. So, we multiply this those two only rest all will remain same those two only we are reducing the uh, their uh, influence on the variance. So, we will see what the variance becomes uh, that uh, uh, for the um, for the just a minute for which one it was yeah for the liver yeah for the liver it is 0 0.4182. So, one fourth of 0 0.4182 similarly for the casing it is one fourth into 0 0.3578 uh, and the uh, that 2.4 the, the error is expressed as here in because we are uh, removing that percentage thing here. So, it is 0 0.024 and from this we find that the value of v t is equal to 0 0.006 taking a square root of that would give us a standard deviation which is 0 0.0775 kg. Now, 7 uh, uh, 6 standard deviation of that 0 0.0775 kg is 0 0.645 kg. Now, we will see 
if that works now. So, here you see that the first and last were the same, but in the middle two the lever and casing we are reducing the range which was 18.75 to 19.25 we are reducing and we are increasing the lower level and reducing the higher level. So, what we are doing we are uh, tightening it. So, it instead of 18.75 it becomes 18.875 and 19.25 becomes 19.125 same is for casing thing. Now, what happens we have to then with this new dimension we have to again run that experiment as I said again see whether it works. So, again the new experimental run is done and these are the values. So, it is iterative process now how many times you do no new uh, information or knowledge you require you only have to carry out the experiment. So, what happens we cal uh, do the exact calculation as we did earlier same types of calculation and we recalculate these values based on the modified dimension of the lever and the casing by changing physically and now we are finding from the result what is the uh, uh, outcome. So, here the five factors or components are significant based on f test and 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 here we see exactly with the same calculation and by pulling again that you see that uh, here the uh, s 2 is minimal. So, s 2 is merged with the error. So, 1 plus 8 becomes 9 s 2 goes. So, rest all remains that uh, washer 1, washer 2, washer 3 liver casing and spring 1. So, this is what it is. Now, uh, so, now again so the percentage contribution etcetera recalculated which you see on the last column. Now, what happens this would now require us to find out the standard deviation which we have calculated square root of the uh, variance which is 0 0.093 divided by 15 which we can see here total t sum of square is 0 0.093 by 15 and uh, 6 standard deviation is therefore, 0.474 kg. Now, we have to examine this is whether it is the it is meeting the tol uh, specified tolerance range which is 0 0.5 kg 1.4 minus 0 0.9. Now, we see that it is meeting it 0 0.5 kg is the requirement and it is giving 0 0.474 kg therefore, this tolerance values are acceptable. So, here in through these steps you know how to how to set the tolerance for components. So, that outcome is influenced in a way that it meets the desired or target values. In conclusion uh, I would like to point out that uh, uh, this uh, tolerance is uh, has been explained with an example. The objective is to familiarize with the design methodology which is important from the perspective of product engineering and is different from the conventional specification limit based analysis and addresses the effect of variation from various sources and reduces their effects on the product performance variation. But the video tutorial material is scantily available. I repeat this procedural steps therefore, is in place that have been explicated with an example it is anticipated to be an useful input for the requirements in practice and for the students and for developing their uh, product engineering skills particularly for complex products. Hope you will take interest and go through some of these uh, statistical uh, techniques easy to learn and you will certainly use it in uh, certain applications of yours. Thank you uh, and uh, um, uh, before I close I uh, would like to uh, uh, mention the reference which is here.
and uh, finally i thank you for attending this lecture i am sure you would be uh, uh, it will help you and you would be using it in your work thank you once again